every woman deep down is looking in the mirror every day and assessing, am I good enough, beautiful enough, desirable enough? Your job, if you choose it, is to start inviting her into environments where she gets to practice being in surrender and wateriness. Being in surrender is a, st a st stamina. It's a muscle that you're building and expanding. So the first time you invite her into little moments of surrender at home or on a date, that balloon might feel really constricted to her. Oh my God, he's calling. Why would he call? You guys just had sex. It's probably a mistake. It's, yeah. it's a mistake. He's, he's butt dialing you. Hello? Oh, hey there, it's, it's Aaron. Oh, uh, this is Amy. I think you butt dialed me. No, no, I, I, I dialed you with my fingers. What's she saying? What's she saying? Shh. He called me on purpose. Hang up. He's obviously like sick or something. So he's um, yeah, what's up? I was just calling to say I had a really good time last night. I was wondering if you wanted to um, hang out again. Will you say that again, please? I was wondering if I could see you again. You know what? I'm going to call the police. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll just talk to you about it tomorrow at the interview, okay? Oh, yes. Yes, she's saying okay. it. She's saying it. Bye. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll talk to you then. Oh, man. Huh? So the first time you invite her into little moments of surrender at home or on a date, that balloon might feel really constricted to her. But we're just adding, like, little breaths of air to make it a little bigger, a little bigger, a little bigger. The end result of both of you practicing this is so phenomenal. It reminds me of what you said when you two first got together and you'd have those conversations where it was like, oh, we're so excited to be talking about this and disagreeing and agreeing on this. That's like polarity. That's like push and pull and desire and magic. And so when you are owning more of your masculine mountain, and she is learning to have courage in her wateriness and surrender. Oh, and when you two get to collide in that, that's what we're all looking for, right? Those poignant, incredible moments that are crackling on fire. It's like she's you know, created this whole world of, let's say it's a whole big Lego world that she's carefully put all the pieces together, but it has to be like monitored at all times or something might break off or be lost. And so when we're asking her to surrender and be more watery and be more in the flow with you, she's risking a whole heck of a lot. The other side of this though, is when a woman learns to have stamina with that terror and practice surrender. She learns that she can become water with you and then she can come back to her own form and she can be water and she can come back. And even if one piece of the Lego tower fell off, she can either put it back on or she's learned something so deep from your incredible resonance as a man who's not in the swirl and not in the whirlwind and not in the water, that when she comes back into her own form and shape, she maybe doesn't need such restriction anymore. And then she practices again and she needs less restriction and again and less restriction. And suddenly she has more love for herself and love for the wateriness of her and forgiveness of the wateriness of her and deep, deep gratitude for the masculine presence that you are. You and your wife had some momentum moving forward, but then a little bit of that has been lost lately. And a lot of that is due to her being really stressed out. First, I want to start with that part, that really like stressed out woman, the task 
mastering like oh that like she is so wound up and she can't be in her femininity and sensuality in that moment at all that really goes back to that clinging to the life buoy of form and what's going through her psyche even though she may not be aware of this is if I lose control if I lose a detail if a piece of the lego castle I've created gets lost Everything is lost. My safety is gone. My sense of value, my identity, my form, my shape is not there. And if it's not there, what the heck happens? So that's, that's what you're feeling is that clinging to the buoy. There's also a piece in that where, again, see this like why women need you men so much. We are that brain of spaghetti where everything is connected we have to be on top of everything at all times I'm thinking about my work details I'm thinking about things I have to get from home I'm thinking this and this and there's no compartmentalization between those so I have to a woman has to be monitoring these to-do lists all over her brain at all times and there's no escape And then what blows me away about what I hear is more like for men is they, you know, are holding a lot in their brain. But when they're in this compartment at work, they're focusing on that and then close the door, go home and whatever you need to focus on at home, you're in that compartment and then close the door. Both ways of doing things are brilliant and needed God, that's why when a woman learns to surrender and be more watery with her man, she can start to learn some of those, um, how to calm the spaghetti parts of her brain because her man's modeling to her that mountain of singular focus. And she will never be able to be the same kind of singular focus, but she'll be able to feel his calm in the moments between those compartments. And that will teach her cells to find her own sense of calm. So I'm not surprised that you feel kind of out of momentum because she's been in that stressed out place. Uh, What I will say is, and that's a scary place to feel like, oh, where's the momentum going? It's such an easy, It's an easy mind shift. And the mind shift is to have presence that this is a journey and that there will be beautiful end results to this journey. Your job in those moments when she, you don't feel like she's in momentum with you and she's, you know, in her own world of stress. um, And trust me, she doesn't want to be there, but it's the only way she knows how to do things is to continue the practice of tapping deeper and deeper into what you truly want for your life, how you want your existence to be. How do you wanna experience your day? What are your goals? How are you looking to serve the world? This is so important for you to do because, again, it's that calm presence. And it opens up, when we're touching into our deepest wants, it opens us up into a a spirituality and energy where we're not so focused on everything that's going wrong in the moment. It gives us hope and progression and vision forward. And that's your job to keep the vision moving forward for yourself. And then I humbly ask that you keep the vision forward for where you want to be with this woman in your life. It's not your job to make sure she gets there, but it's your job to hold sacred what you're wanting most for you and the third entity of this relationship. 
You didn't want your wife to feel attacked, but that she felt attacked. When we look back at how we responded to things or people responded to us, yeah, it can be it can be embarrassing. There's something I've learned about pain, and this is what we're talking about, right? A lot of emotional pain. Pain is like a it's like a time traveler. We can hold on to a hurt in our hearts for decades and our whole life, and it never goes away. And it just keeps getting like stabbed and stabbed and stabbed. And that's what's going on, right? With all of us in the relationships, we have little holes from childhood that how wonderfully our relationship brings up opportunities to feel those and heal those again. And when we're not in pain, we can remember the idea of pain. But if it's been healed, It's like you can't feel the bruise anymore. There is nothing in you that's supposed to agree with your wife that you attacked her. And at the same time, something that happened hit some pain points for her. Every woman deep down is looking in the mirror every day and assessing Am I good enough, beautiful enough, desirable enough? Am I enough? Every day there is a like wicked witch in her head assessing all the things that she probably failed at or will fail at if she doesn't do it perfectly. And unbeknownst to the wonderful men in her life, she's carrying that around all day. She's probably not even cognizant of it. And so if something comes out between you two and she reacts so strongly, it's not about you. It's about all this in her and her pain. And it is totally okay to, after the fact, Tell her how it makes you feel to know that she felt attacked. Honey, it makes me feel so sad that you felt attacked by me. Sometimes all a woman needs is just someone to resonate and say, I have an emotion about this. It's not a happy one. I don't, that's not what I want for us. That's not how I want our relationship to be. And you are allowed to say that as many times as needed. Gosh, I felt so worried when this happened or when you said this. That's not how I want our relationship to be. I want us to be connected and in communication with each other. It is okay that your wife has little holes in her heart that you touch in on sometimes because the more she's receiving your compassion, you're seeing her in how this affected her. You're sharing how it affected you, which is the language of emotion. It's a woman's core language. You have the opportunity to go back in time for those little daggers and hurts to be healed. And then it's not like you two are carrying these on like baggage year after year. She can think back to an incident with you and go, oh yeah, I remember I felt attacked. But there's going to be no pain there and no judgment. It's just a remembrance. The bruise isn't there anymore. To err is human, right? (laughs) And the greatest, greatest gift, I think, of being human is we can always go back in time and say, "I, I wish these things had gone better. So 
So even in this incident that you mentioned in your email, there's no, it's never too late. It's never too late to say two weeks ago, a month ago, a year ago, I realized you felt attacked and it made me so sad because what I want for our relationship is connection and communication and that we build each other up and support each other. I'm going to tell you about a woman whose heart is sunshine, whose body burned hot. I'm going to tell you about a woman whose cold is tundra with some frozen eyes.